Chapter 6 of The Path of Prosperity This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Sunny Abdullah Chapter 6 The Secret of Abounding Happiness Great is the thirst for happiness, and equally great is the lack of happiness. The majority of the poor long for riches, believing that their possession would bring them supreme and lasting happiness. Many who are rich, having gratified every desire and whim, suffer from ennui and repletion, and are farther from the possession of happiness even than the very poor. If we reflect upon this state of things, it will ultimately lead us to a knowledge of the all-important truth that happiness is not derived from mere outward possessions, nor misery from the lack of them. For if this were so, we should find the poor always miserable, and the rich always happy, whereas the reverse is frequently the case. Some of the most wretched people whom I have known were those who were surrounded with riches and luxury, whilst some of the brightest and happiest people I have met were possessed of only the barest necessities of life. Many men who have accumulated riches have confessed that the selfish gratification which followed the acquisition of riches has robbed life of its sweetness, and that they were never so happy as when they were poor. What, then, is happiness, and how is it to be secured? Is it a figment, a delusion, and a suffering alone perennial? We shall find, after earnest observation and reflection, that all, except those who have entered the way of wisdom, believe that happiness is only to be obtained by the gratification of desire. It is this belief, rooted in the soil of ignorance, and continually watered by selfish cravings, that is the cause of all the misery in the world. And I do not limit the word desire to the grosser animal cravings. It extends to the higher psychic realm, where far more powerful, subtle, and insidious cravings hold in bondage the intellectual and refined, depriving them of all that beauty, harmony, and purity of soul whose expression is happiness. Most people will admit that selfishness is the cause of all the unhappiness in the world, but they fall under the soul-destroying delusion that it is somebody else's selfishness, and not their own. When you are willing to admit that all your unhappiness is the result of your own selfishness, you will not be far from the gates of paradise. But so long as you are convinced that it is the selfishness of others that is robbing you of joy, so long will you remain a prisoner in your self-created purgatory. Happiness is that inward state of perfect satisfaction which is joy and peace, and from which all desire is eliminated. The satisfaction which results from gratified desire is brief and illusionary, and is always followed by an increased demand for gratification. Desire is as insatiable as the ocean, and clamors louder and louder as its demands are attended to. It claims ever-increasing service from its deluded devotees, until at last they are struck down with physical or mental anguish, and are hurled into the purifying fires of suffering. Desire is the reign of hell, and all torments are centered there. The giving up of desire is the realization of heaven, and all delights await the pilgrim there. I sent my soul through the invisible, some letter of that afterlife to spell, and by and by my soul returned to me, and whispered, I myself am heaven and hell. Heaven and hell are inward states. Sink into self and all its gratifications, and you sink into hell. Rise above self into that state of consciousness which is the utter denial and forgetfulness of self, and you enter heaven. Self is blind, without judgment, not possessed of true knowledge, and always leads to suffering. Correct perception, unbiased judgment, and true knowledge belong only to the divine state and only in so far as you realize this divine consciousness can you know what real happiness is. So long as you persist in selfishly seeking for your own personal happiness, so long will happiness elude you, and you will be sowing the seeds of wretchedness. In so far as you succeed in losing yourself in the service of others, in that measure will happiness come to you, and you will reap a harvest of bliss. It is in loving... Not in being loved, the heart is blessed. It is in giving, not in seeking gifts, 
we find our quest. Whatever be thy longing or thy need, that do thou give, so shall thy soul be fed, and thou indeed shalt truly live. Cling to self, and you cling to sorrow. Relinquish self, and you enter into peace. To seek selfishly is not only to lose happiness, but even that which we believe to be the source of happiness. See how the glutton is continually looking about for a new delicacy wherewith to stimulate his deadened appetite, and how bloated, burdened, and diseased, scarcely any food at last is eaten with pleasure. Whereas, he who has mastered his appetite, and not only does not seek, but never thinks of gustatory pleasure, finds delight in the most frugal meal. The angel form of happiness, which men, looking through the eyes of self, imagine they see in gratified desire, when clasped is always found to be the skeleton of misery. Truly, he that seeketh his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life shall find it. Abiding happiness will come to you when, ceasing to selfishly cling, you are willing to give up. When you are willing to lose, unreservedly, that impermanent thing which is so dear to you, and which, whether you cling to it or not, will one day be snatched from you, then you will find that that which seemed to you like a painful loss turns out to be a supreme gain. To give up in order to gain, then this there is no greater delusion, nor no more prolific source of misery. But to be willing to yield up and to suffer loss, this is indeed the way of life. How is it possible to find real happiness by centering ourselves in those things which, by their very nature, must pass away? Abiding in real happiness can only be found by centering ourselves in that which is permanent. Rise, therefore, above the clinging to and craving for impermanent things, and you will then enter into a consciousness of the eternal. And as, rising above self, and by growing more and more into the spirit of purity, self-sacrifice, and universal love, you become centered in that consciousness, you will realize that happiness which has no reaction, and which can never be taken from you. The heart that has reached utter self-forgetfulness in its love for others has not only become possessed of the highest happiness, but has entered into immortality, for it has realized the divine. Look back upon your life, and you will find that the moments of supremest happiness were those in which you uttered some word, or performed some act, of compassion or self-denying love. Spiritually, happiness and harmony are synonymous. Harmony is one phase of the great law whose spiritual expression is love. All selfishness is discord, and to be selfish is to be out of harmony with the divine order. As we realize that all-embracing love, which is the negation of self, we put ourselves in harmony with the divine music, the universal song, and that ineffable melody which is true happiness becomes our own. Men and women are rushing hither and thither in the blind search for happiness and cannot find it, nor ever will until they recognize that happiness is already within them and round about them, filling the universe, and that they, in their selfish searching, are shutting themselves out from it. I followed happiness to make her mine, past towering oak and swinging ivy vine. She fled, I chased, o'er slanting hill and dale, o'er fields and meadows in the purpling vale. Pursuing rapidly o'er dashing stream, I scaled the dizzy cliffs where eagles scream. I traversed swiftly every land and em, but always happiness eluded me. Exhausted, fainting, I pursued no more, but sank to rest upon a barren shore. One came and asked for food, and one for alms. I placed the bread and gold in bony palms. One came for sympathy, and one for rest. I shared with every needy one my best. When lo, sweet happiness, with form divine, stood by me, whispering softly, I am thine. These beautiful lines of Burley's express the secret of all abounding happiness. 
sacrifice the personal and transient, and you rise at once into the impersonal and permanent. Give up that narrow cramped self that seeks to render all things subservient to its own petty interests, and you will enter into the company of the angels, into the very heart and essence of universal love. Forget yourself entirely in the sorrows of others and in administering to others, and divine happiness will emancipate you from all sorrow and suffering. Taking the first step with a good thought, the second with a good word, and the third with a good deed, I entered paradise. And you also may enter into paradise by pursuing the same course. It is not beyond, it is here. It is realized only by the unselfish. It is known in its fullness only to the pure in heart. If you have not realized this unbounded happiness, you may begin to actualize it by ever holding before you the lofty ideal of unselfish love and aspiring towards it. Aspirational prayer is desire turned upward. It is the soul turning toward its divine source, where alone permanent satisfaction can be found. By aspiration the destructive forces of desire are transmuted into divine and all-preserving energy. To aspire is to make an effort to shake off the trammels of desire. It is the prodigal made wise by loneliness and suffering, returning to his father's mansion. As you rise above the sordid self, as you break, one after another, the chains that bind you, you'll realize the joy of giving, as distinguished from the misery of grasping. Giving of your substance, giving of your intellect, giving of the love and light that is growing within you. You will then understand that it is indeed more blessed to give than to receive, but the giving must be of the heart without any taint of self, without desire for reward. The gift of pure love is always attended with bliss. If, after you have given, you are wounded because you are not thanked or flattered, or your name put in the paper, Know then that your gift was prompted by vanity and not by love, and you were merely giving in order to get, were not really giving, but grasping. Lose yourself in the welfare of others. Forget yourself in all that you do. This is the secret of abounding happiness. Ever be on the watch to guard against selfishness, and learn faithfully the divine lessons of inward sacrifice. So shall you climb the highest heights of happiness, and shall remain in the never-clouded sunshine of eternal joy, clothed in the shining garment of immortality. Are you searching for the happiness that does not fade away? Are you looking for the joy that lives and leaves no grievous day? Are you panting for the water brooks of love and life and peace? Then let all dark desires depart, and selfish seeking cease. Are you lingering in the paths of pain, grief haunted, stricken sore? Are you wandering in the ways that wound your weary feet the more? Are you sighing for the resting place where tears and sorrows cease? Then sacrifice your selfish heart, and find the heart of peace. End of chapter 6